Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I am Jen Maxey. I'm the Assistant Director of Public Programs at the Skirball Cultural Center in Los Angeles. Ananya is texting me about the playlist, so I'm just going to tell you. It, that is Aditya Prakash. He has a wonderful ensemble here in Los Angeles called the Aditya Prakash Ensemble, and you can find him on Spotify. He is a lovely, lovely artist. And uh, so that was the music you were just listening to. Uh, so anyway, onward. I am the Assistant Director of Public Programs at the Skirball. We are a cultural center and a museum in Los Angeles. We are rooted in values to seek learning, pursue justice, and honor memory. And we're really, really privileged tonight to speak to three artists, Ananya Chatterjee, Sharon Bridgeforth, and Spirit McIntyre, whose work is rooted in social justice and engaging and inspiring communities through their art and practices. The Ananya Dance Theater in St. Paul, Minnesota is the leading creator of feminist contemporary dance in the global arts and social justice movement. Ananya Dance Theater's work seeks to reframe the ground that they dance on through invoking work and dreams of BIPOC women and femmes. And I should add that the Skirball was really honored to present a prior project of the Ananya Dance Theater back in 2017 called Shyamali Sprouting Words which looked at women's work and resistance around the world. It was a beautiful, beautiful piece. And we hope to present the piece that we're gonna be talking about tonight, Dastak, in its full iteration sometime in 2022. So keep an eye out for that. But Ananya Chatterjee herself is the founder of the Ananya Dance Theater. She also leads the Shangram Institute for Performance and Social Justice in Minneapolis. Ananya is a Guggenheim and McKnight Fellow, the recipient of numerous awards. She's an author and a scholar. She's toured as a dancer all over the world, as well as being a professor of dance at the University of Minnesota. Her accomplishments and contributions to dance, as well as to her community, are really too numerous to list, but I hope you'll get a sense of what she's up to tonight. The project that we're here to talk about tonight is the Ananya Dance Theater's recent dance film, Dustock, I Wish You Me, and I hope that everyone had a chance to view it in its four chapters. This piece had many artistic collaborators, and we are so honored to have two of them here in addition to Ananya tonight. Accompanying the dancing in Dustock are the words of Sharon Bridgeforth, a Doris Duke performing artist, a writer that creates ritual jazz theater. We're gonna talk about that later. She's a 2020 to 2023 Playwright Center core member. Sharon has served as a dramaturg for the Urban Bush Women Choreographic Center Initiatives Fellowship Program. And she's been in residence at multiple universities and organizations. Sharon is also a published author and the executive producer and host of the Who Yo People Is podcast series. Also collaborating on this project and with us tonight is Spirit McIntyre. Spirit is a cellist, vocalist, songwriter, wellness advocate, and sound healer who has used their gender identity, musicianship, and practice to uplift minority, LGBTQ, and women-focused communities. Spirit describes their music as healing, earthly, and ancestral, and I think we really feel that in this piece. So thank you all for being here. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Yay. Yay. All right. So we're in a couple of different time zones here. Uh, Spirit is in New Orleans. Sharon's here in L uh, LA with us. And Nanya's in Minnesota. So welcome, welcome. Welcome to the audience at home. So we hope that everyone saw the beautiful dance film in its four chapters, Earth, Water, Fire, Air. Um, so we're going to just talk about the process of that, and because I think that it's rare that we get to people get to hear from artistic collaborators like yourselves. And so we were chatting a little bit beforehand, and I think what we want to start off with is this idea. And Sharon, it's in your bio, and this is something that I know you speak a lot about: this idea of the jazz aesthetic, because this isn't just a dance. This isn't just sounds. This isn't just words. This is something altogether new and and uh, collaborated. So, wh whoever Ananya or Sharon, if you want us to, to start off by kind of talking to us about what that is first of all, and how that worked with this piece. 
maybe maybe I'll talk a little about what it is, and Ananya, maybe you can talk about how it works with this piece. Um, Aisha Rahman coined the term theatrical jazz aesthetic in the 70s, and Omi Oshun Joni L. Jones has written the book about it called Theatrical Jazz Performance Ashe and the Power of the Present Moment. So there's lots that can be found about it. But what I'll just say, um, first, I want to name some of the um, architects, uh, Diane McIntyre, uh, the great Lori Carlos, who's our Ananya and I's big sister, um, Robbie McCauley, who became an ancestor recently, uh, Jessica Hagedorn, um, Jawale Willa Joe Zolar, and Sekou Sundiata. It's a long, 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 long list. Daniel Alexander Jones, lots of folks. We all, just like jazz musicians, by the time you name it, they're like, doing something else. And maybe we don't all use the term or think of it quite in the same way, but we do agree that there are certain things um, that we're mixing with. And so polyrhythms, uh, uh, the practice of listening deeply and listening for the standing inside of your rigor, your practice, your spirit, your community, your ancestors, standing in that field and listening for the thing that you haven't done yet, listening to be a vessel so that you can open for what wants to come through inside of whatever the architecture of the work is. So you have a rigorous structure, but the goal is to create something new. And so very often um, there's simultaneity, there's polyrhythmic, there's lots of people talking at the same time in, when it's theater. Um, so that I'll just leave it there. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I want to just begin by saying, um, holding up that I'm coming to you from Minishota Makoche, the unceded territories of the Dakota Oyate and Anishinaabe peoples. And um, the thing that I learned from my Dakota relatives is the maxim of mitakuye oasin, we are all related. And there has been much learning in that um, because that kind of relationship, you know, is how we find ourselves, each other, inside the, the theatrical jazz aesthetic as well, um, where, you know, we can find each other coming from different places, but meeting and then going somewhere else for a walk um, not in the not in the way of just somehow exploring or exploring for just because we can but because there is an intention uh, the intention of justice perhaps the intention of untold stories as Sharon said listening for what hasn't yet come together um, and I'll also say that you know theatrical jazz is in being ready for what is it's it's a way of being ready right so i think about you know when we were in mansi together we had a rich residency where we created so much of this work spirit came to visit us we had our residency and boom the day they the day they left that was the day everything got shut down and, you know, we were left and as in the Twin Cities, we experienced, you know, multiple pandemics, the, you know, the white supremacy and the murder of George Floyd. And at the same time, um, there was this notion, uh, there was this crisis of affordable housing and many of our BIPOC community members were living in our, living in parks, you know. Um, so, you know, we were, we didn't know what to do because a, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't dance, obviously, inside the institute, but our institute was also damaged during the uprising. Uh, we were rehearsing in the parks. We were next to unsheltered communities. It was all, it was just really difficult to figure out that moment. But being, it seemed that Dasta came to a new form at that moment because we were dancing in the middle of everything, you know, in, and I and I live a few blocks from where all of this happened. So it was right outside of my house. It was the park was right, you know, is, is, a, is a two blocks down. So, you know, being ready for that moment of capturing some things on film. And, you know, we have an amazing collaborator, Darren Johnson, who, who was able to craft little bits of the work 
um, as you know, they're they're sort of trailers so that they give they catch that that work at that moment. And now we are rebirthing the work. So this constant re readiness and reiteration is also part of that, part of that way of being in, in artistic process, I think. So Sharon, how did you, so Spirit, you were already part of this piece that had been started, was already developing and then everything shut down. So you came back to continue that work with Dastak. Sharon, how did your piece in this begin? When I had the great privilege of being with the company at Mansi a couple of times uh, and working in person um, intensely and joyfully, lovingly and in profound ways. And so I wrote some uh, pieces there and recorded them. And so the Ananya and all the uh, spirit had the recordings, like the collaborators had those recordings. And so they incorporated that into the larger vision. Ah, uh, okay. So there's so much in this, in these chapters about ancestors there's a larger story, you know, and Sharon, you say your words are, you know, rise, go home, you are loved. And then at the end, you know, if not for me, for those coming in the final chapter, you know, so there's really a sense that this is about something much bigger. What, what did that mean for each of you when you, when you were participating in this? Do you want to begin spirit and then we'll go to Sharon and I'll, and I'll end it up. Sure. Hmm. I mean, so I think so much of, um, being able to create, um, is ancestorship so much of like being able to listen, like you were saying, Sharon, that deep listening and then respond, add to the listening, add to the experience. Um, so much of that deep listening feels like it, it is part of ancestor work anyway. So, um, I don't know, it, it feels like it just is. It just feels like it just is ancestor work, right? And so the, I wish you me, the go home now, the Oya parts of this, just, yeah, it just feels like it's all an interaction with the ancestors. So, um, yeah, so even those those parts that you're mentioning, but it just all feels like that. Um, so it feels like a really beautiful exercise and project to just be able to lean into that. Um, we had a little rehearsal yesterday and talking about what ways do we wanna bring in maybe whispers that could be ancestors and layering sounds that could be ancestors. So. Um, you know, even still trying to like pouring in more because it is all ancestors. So it's like, oh, well, even more and this element, even this and that. And this. Um, so it's more like a feeling. Um, yeah, that's what I have. <laughs> I, for me, the art and the life are not separate. Uh, and so everything is driven by the ancestors uh, of light and progress. Um, and uh, I'm a child of the great migration. So I actually am a Southerner in spirit and spent a lot of time in the South, but the people that raised me here in LA, they recounted, I feel like they opened the portals for the ancestors from me, from the, for me from the very beginning by recounting stories 
of our history by their yearning and longing for home that they couldn't go back to because it wasn't safe and they couldn't make good lives there. Um, so it's just part of everything in my life. And I think that's, as an African-American person, I think that's just how it is. Um, Ananya has created a form of dance that highly activates her ancestors and the people indigenous to, to where she's from. And in spirit, it's like, I hear them. Like I feel them, like we're, we're connected. And so um, I think when we get in the room together, we, we, we walk with that portal and we get together and the portal opens. Yes, um, thank you. Oh, is Ananya frozen for any of you? Yeah. Yes. Ananya, your internet might be. Sorry, I'm. Okay, you're good now, I think. Yeah, sorry, my internet is unstable. Um, so I, um, when I began this idea, this notion of us walking this project of walking across borders, this notion of borders, this notion that human beings can be illegal, how can human beings be illegal, you know? But anyway, I was starting because, the, because of, you know, I, I come from a border state, West Bengal is a border state, I'm Bengali, and the, you know, partition divided people up, but um, in, and the, the violence that accompanied it was so difficult. Um, people also didn't quite understand that between my house and my aunt's house, there's a national border. How? I just walk over to my aunt's house to share uh, the spinach I cooked today. How can I not do that? So that kind of, you know, this inability sometimes to understand what a national border is. And it was, you know, but also I was noticing how we were, there was so much, um, there was so much uh, painful violence at the borders in India at that point. And then, you know, it was layered with the notion of violence in borders here. Um, and I, and so I feel like those stories kept, when you invite that, open the door to say, I want to, I want to remember what happened. Um, many stories came in and I've been talking with, spirit and um sharon and damien who is the other collaborator that when these you know there is this moment in earth when we are rolling when you know and i had originally i had choreographed that as this moment and then spirits you know Sh sharon created the home now poet poem the spell of okay you go home now and rest spirit uh, starts to sing this beautiful thing um and then the other day and 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 spirit might tell you about there's a there's a particular story and that, that too but the other day when we read that these bodies were floating down the ganga i was like oh my god that's where that's where i am um so people also call you you know and i think part of the work is being able to listen to who is calling and um and a similar call also happened when we were in Mansi and we were doing the work. Uh, when I was, you know, when I was, uh, we were working with some folks in the Southern Poverty Law Center and someone said, someone who works regularly uh, with, you know, with um, people um, that a lawyer who works, they said, you can't, you can't imagine doing this piece without talking about solitary confinement. And I, I was terrified, but I started to do my research and started to imagine myself. And then uh, this person was there at the showing and they said, um, you know, I can I could see my the stories of the people who I go to court for my clients. I could see their stories. So the call, the calling just com comes when you open the door. And I think part of artistry, our artistry has been to open the door. Yeah. Well, so then let's talk about ritual. You know, let's talk about how you brought ritual into this piece for each of you, um, because I know that that's a big part of all of your practices. Yeah. 
I think we have to start with Ananya because Ananya, you, you know, you, you created the world. It's the ground you put breath in and it's the tradition that you created with the dance that you created. That is the structure for everything. And could you say even a little about the dance that is your form that you created? Um, yes, so your cha, which is a contemporary dance form that I created, I created out of the traditions I had learned because the traditions have become encrusted with some hierarchies of violet, of gender, caste and class. So I moved away from those very traditions, yet I'm not I'm interested in retaining my cultural specificity. So I made this contemporary dance form to be in solidarity with communities of justice, you know? Um, so part of it is that, but I feel, I feel this word ritual is interesting to me because for me, I feel sometimes as an, as a person of, you know, as an Asian person, um, sometimes I feel if I just lift my, if I just lift my phone up, people are like, oh, that's ritual. And I'm like, no, that's not ritual. That's a logistical action. But I feel ritual is not in fact in, it's in the heightening of intention and pathway into meaningful action. And I think that's, that's where, that's where, you know, breath can be ritualized when it's intentional and placed inside uh, placed inside a frame, if you will. So I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I'm careful how I use it because I feel like ritual has sometimes been used as a way to keep people who look like me outside of contemporary, contemporaneous innovation, if you will, you know. However, I think Sharon and Spirit might um, provoke, offer different provocations. So. That's really powerful, Ananya, to think about the ways in which ritual, which is so intrinsic to what you're doing, could be in the eyes of a beholder that seeks to keep you from something, how they would then put it on you in a way that's like, oh, well, that's this, it's not that, when it's, it's all of it. Because um, it's whatever you're doing plus the energy that you imbue it with and the intention and the breath. And the, I mean, the, I, if, if you ever, um, if anyone ever gets the opportunity, um, if they get invited um, to Ananya's dance studio or a workshop that Ananya's doing, um, before you're doing anything, right? Before you're doing the warm up, um, before you're stretching, um, before you're doing her very rigorous warm up, uh, y'all don't know what yoga is. Um, there are people out here that think they're doing yoga. <laughs> Come to Ananya's warm up, and you will get the truth about what you've been doing with your body. But um, you know, even in that, there's ritual. There's the ritual of what we say together um, before the dance rehearsal begins. So really just thinking about these things that we might do over and over again, but not by rote. So it's not just you're just doing it over and over again, it has no value, but it's like really um, doing it and it has value. So there are so many ways. So I just wanted to highlight that that's something Ananya is doing before the dance and every dance class and what that does. Um, and for me, I mean, thinking of the ritual sometimes of, or the act of just singing, um, like when we, the three of us were together um, in Florida, it was such a powerful space to be able to enter and to be able to be like, okay, um, here's a space that has been held for days by Sharon and Ananya and um, the other dancers. And it's like, okay, I'm here. And I get to 
sing into, sing onto, um, and breathe into, and watch how like just breath becomes something and changes things. So it there's this, you know, I'm thinking about uh, Octavia E. Butler and how she said, all that you change changes you. This is just a part of it. I mean, because she's still brilliant. But um, but just thinking about the, yes, right, the ways that we came together and then all that we changed changed us. And so that ritual of being allowed to come into a space and being invited into a space and being, you know, and Ananya, like we have, Ananya and I have not been working together for a long time. Right. So we, we started working together at the top of 2020. And we, when Sharon, Ananya and I were together in Florida, that was the first time that I entered Ananya's space. Before that, she saw me performing in New Orleans. And so it was like, oh, my gosh. And that was November. So November 2019, she saw me work and was like, Okay, let's get this together. And then January of 2020, we were together. So just to give some context, right? And so again, this is, I think this also points to ritual and intention and activation because Ananya saw me doing this thing that was lots of breath and lots of cello and was like, you, what are you doing? Who are you? I don't even have a budget, but I'm going to work we're going to write you in the budget, like we're going to squeeze it because we have to have you. So just thinking about that part of creation that is deep listening, instinct, and how all of that is part of ritual too, right? The who and so much trust, I think, is part of it too. Um, and what that then allows and what that then allows for me to hear and be like, oh, oh my gosh, Sharon just said that thing. And I should say, I wish you me. Or like, go home, no, no, no. But it's like, it's coming from, oh. Right, so that's the like, oh, I heard it. And then I, and Sharon felt it and then, and then Ananya felt it and then, you know, so it's just this like, circle and cycle of things. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't really have anything to add, just yes. <laughs> yeah, that that was great, Spirit. You, you you just sort of described, I think, like the ultimate, you know, artistic collaboration and conversation that we want to have with each other. And I want to, Jen, may I add something? What Spirit was describing is what I, in my, in, in my head, it's Spirit jumping. Because it's like you, when I saw Spirit, I was like, like I, you know, like my cells quickened. They went like this, you know? And I was like, they are, they are speaking at a different, in a, at a different level. You know, it's not a logistical level. It was like, I could not stay in my chair without moving with them. It was, you know, and it's called vibration, right? It's vibration. And I feel like that spirit jumping thing that happens is, so what is core to my practice is what I call grounded yet nimble. You can be nimble to do the footwork when you're grounded. That is also the core of spirit jumping. When you're connected deeply to yourself and to the ground on which you stand, you can actually see the connections everywhere. And um, I want to tell, remind Sharon Bridgeforth that when she moved away from, you know, I was always hoping, I always hoped that she would move and live here one of these days. And I, and she just, you know, it didn't happen. And I was just like, oh, I want to work with her. And I remember sitting in the Seward Co-op and saying, I'm going to find a way to work with you all the time. <laughs> Sharon, here we are. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Thankfully, thankfully, thankfully. And I know Lori Carlos is laughing. I know she's just rocking back and forth and laughing. Uh, yeah, I'm very grateful. Yeah, very grateful. 
That is so, that is so great. It seems like I've been seeing a lot of messages lately that have to do with being in touch with that guide. You just called it a spirit jumping, you know, that, but it's the guide, it's the inner guide that if you're open to allows you to kind of hear and see and, and know. So just to switch gears a little bit, because I think, you know, our audience might be, might wonder about this, you know, this piece was created in the summer in Minneapolis, in the wake of the George Floyd murder at a time that was obviously very, very tumultuous for the country, for the world. It's just an awakening. So talk to us about that experience of being in, and I know Ananya, your center was shut down for a while. And, and I know too, just because I was in touch with you a little bit that your community was amazing and the way people came together, the solidarity, the, you know, the helping, but talk about, cause you were, you were in the midst of, of, of this piece when this all happened. So t talk to us about how that was in Minneapolis last summer. Right. So, you know, the piece itself, much of the choreography was actually all happening in, had been, had been created. It's that it started to shift when we were, when, you know, when we started dancing in the park and then we found ourselves next to, you know, members of the unsheltered community right there. And we were, you know, some of the filming happened right here on Lake Street, just in front of, you know, like, so right in the street in front of my house, which had been burned to a rubble. And so what does it mean to rise from that, from that devastation? What is, what is, what is justice? It, I feel, I feel like it was the biggest reminder of what does justice need? And now, yet again, as we are reimagining it, what are what is speaking to us? So, at that point that the film was made, it became one iteration of one iteration of the work we are doing, and it you know, and it's changing again. At that point, it was about recognizing the recognizing all the multiple forces, and you know, even when we would rehearse, uh, you know trying to say our bowls as you know we have to we had to say our bowls because we were outside <clears throat> and trying to say that over police sirens as you know as they would speed by trying to say that over so many people you know young people who in the middle of the pandemic found that being there was the only time that they playing sports in the field was one of their only breaks in the middle of all of that we're shouting our bowls and over our masks over the police sirens it was really something uh we and you know and a really important part of my work is this femme intimacy which um you know it was it was a loss we couldn't do it um because you know we we couldn't really we had to find that intimacy just through our eyes just through reaching not through touch this is a this was a you know there were many adjustments that the work the work struggled uh, as core aspect of my work is the you know the footwork uh it's so difficult to do that on on the ground and you know it it, it was hard yeah someone in as asked the question um what was the biggest challenge of the actual dancing and also ananya someone else is wondering what and i i think you you talked about some of the indian culture that you drew from what what is the dance that you're drawing from what is the cultural kind of origin of your dance and then this other person with what was so challenging about working outside trying to do this dance. yeah and also um, Ananya, can you explain to folks what a bowl is for yes. folks who may yeah. not know so bowl is syllabic accompaniment so you know it helps it's about it's about um, the division and subdivision of time. So, you know, we don't, we understand time in this circularity. So I could go, we would, could be continuous circles, as I think the music you were playing before that. Um, it's, it, 
it's sort of the sound of the drum, but we also, it's a space of infinite creativity. Um, for me, bowl and rhythm um, and is a way of conjuring emotional landscape. I feel I can learn my, I can, I can choreograph when I understand the song of it. And the song of it for me is, is in the bowl. Um, what does that moment feel, you know, what does that moment of betrayal feel like? Um, I, I begin to understand it in the jaggedness of the rhythm and that I articulate in bowl. And then I, you know, I can find the dance um, and go for that. So that's, that's, that's the bowl. The dance um, uh, that the Yorcha, which is the name I gave, I created for this form, comes from Odissi, which is a traditional dance form from the eastern side of India. Chao, Mai Bhanj Chao, which is also from the eastern side of India. Uh, it's a martial art form, traditionally only done by people called men, but currently not. And Vinyasa Yoga, which is the yoga of flow. So these are the three forms from which I have are at the at the base of what this form exists, um, and the challenges, as I said, were really not to be able to really invest fully in the footwork because it was so hard. Our knees were beginning to hurt um, on the uneven ground. You know, uh, balance was difficult. The intimacy of the work, which you know, which was so much about the I love to see the entangling of limbs, so you don't know where. You know, you've, the, the relationship between bodies becomes so porous. I love that. Um, that was a loss because we couldn't touch each other. And um, yeah, I think those were the primary losses and the ability to, you know, use, uh, we consider the face as continuous with the body. So the articulation of emotion happens through all of that. We couldn't use, you know, you could only see part of it. So that, all of that was, I think, difficult. Wearing shoes, what? A whole new way of dancing, had never done it before. <laughs> These were some of the challenges, yeah. Um, and Sharon and Spirit, you were not in Minneapolis at this time. So your part of this was done, okay, all right. Um, we have a question, and I think, you know, Sharon, this might be more for you. You spoke about ancestors. Uh, I heard again Sharon's articulation of theatrical jazz aesthetic, deeply listening to what we have not done yet. It makes me think about liberation, uh, liberation and experience perhaps we have not truly found yet. What of the ancestral plane feels crucial to our liberation? Love. Mm. Pretty, uh, yep. I, I think too, uh, wow, what a profound question. What if the ancestral plane feels crucial? Um, I think also letting them lead, right? Where it's just like, people think they're so much smarter than the ancestors. I'm like, how? Like, that's so foolish. So, you know, where it's just like, if we let them lead, if we, the work, like ancestors are doing their work in the spiritual realm and they need us to do, our, be doing our work in the physical realm. And they're like, yes, let, let us do our work in the spiritual realm. Like trust us to do this work in the spiritual realm and you do your work in the physical realm. But I think, the, but the experience feels like a lot of people are trying to do the work that the ancestors, it's like, no, that's not your work. You're getting it, you're getting it twisted up and messed up. And it's just like, just do your part and entrust that they're doing their part and also ask them and engage them, right? Where it's just like a live living, like, the ancestors are alive in the ways that they're alive. And it's just like, let them lead. You know, so, so many things would be different if we're just like, child, that's your ancestors, just let them lead. They said no already. <laughs> or they said yes, but over here, and you still over there. Um, 
Ananya, did you want to add anything to that? Spirit said something in rehearsal yesterday, which was beautiful. They said, um, you know, you have to, they don't all speak in the same way. So sometimes they'll be like, come on. And sometimes they're like whispering. And if that's not the truth, I don't know what is, um, you know, um, we were talking, that's why they were talking about the necessity of, you know, having that range in the score itself. So it's not just, whispers are not just always at this, you know, are, are different tonalities, different energies. So, but I, I, I have to say Sharon's profound love is just flooring, right? That's, that's how we're here. And, and I feel like love is hard. Love is fucking, excuse me, uh, uh, love is complex. You don't have to, you, you go ahead and curse. Okay, I love it. Do I do, do love it. it. I love it. Thank oh, you. I love to hear it. Okay. <laughs> but it requires something of you, you know? Um, and I think the thing that goes with love is an invitation for healing. I think there is an that in that invitation for healing, there is the requirement of release. And in the release, there are openings for us to move forward in ways that we otherwise would not be able to imagine ourselves to. And um, yeah, I think, I think I learned more from my relatives that have passed now that they're on the other side, because there is this like love that's so pure and I'm less in the way of it. And it makes me feel accountable to do that, be that and show up in that way everywhere, like always, like that's my job and it's hard. So that brings me to talking about healing because all three of you have this element in your, in your work about, about healing, about love, about connection. What, what do you, what do you see your work doing? How do you, how do you hope that your work is situated in, I mean, Sharon, you just said, you know, the crucial, uh, ancestral plane love but what would you identify as some of the areas in our culture that you would hope your work could make some change in i want to respond to that by just lifting up robbie mccauley for a moment um she passed a couple of days ago um a world changer, you know, fierce maker and uh, someone who loved hard and loved good. Uh, and one of the things, Daniel Alexander Jones and I were recently talking about this, that we're learning still from Robbie is how to be curious. So Robbie would create these pieces that opened the door and actively talked about and investigated and disturbed really hard conversations, hard things. And she was able to stay inside of it because she was curious. And in that curiosity, the hard conversations and the hard things could happen. And then love became possible. It didn't always happen, but like that possibility, like that's something I aspire to. And just a quick funny story. Uh, one time I was complaining to Robbie and I was like, oh, what am this, this and that. And they did this and they did that and da, da, da. And she looked at me and she said, lay your weapons down. And she walked away. But Robbie was a fierce fighter. So what I knew was she wasn't say, don't, saying don't fight. She was telling me something else, something that I'm still unpacking. So I lift and hold and am aspiring and learning from Robbie 
in this moment. Thank you, Sharon. That's such a beautiful story. And you always remind us to stay with the to stay with the unpacking. Um, it takes time and everything doesn't make sense in the logistical realm. We have to allow for different ways of meaning making. Um, I'm now, um, I don't know exactly, you know, what what shifts I'm hoping people will make. Jen, but I will say that I'm, I know that I want to invite people, um, both the, both all of us who are participants in the world of dance and others to not think about this practice as being the moment I could land 13,000 turns or, yeah, I'm exaggerating, but you know, like it's not that, that superhuman accomplishment but what actually I, I i feel like the one of the most difficult things to to actually accomplish on stage is to find a group of people who are so who have practiced so carefully with each other that they can be in sync with each other's breath that's the most difficult thing to do because we can do we can even find footwork because there is a clear one two three one two three one two three you can do that you know by practice, but breath without a cue, finding that so difficult. You have to really know how to support and listen for each other's breath inside, coming from deep inside their stomach. That's a whole different thing. So if we can, I feel like if we can shift the way in which, if we can shift the way in which that that happens we are looking for something else we are looking for the way in which dancers artists are connecting to each other in their gaze energetically i think we will free dance from the shackles of capitalism that sometimes threaten threaten it you know dance actually i want to say that there is not i'm fond of saying that there is not a thing called dance right there is only dancing there's not a dance that you can buy and sell. So it exists in that the danced labor is what is the what is the process of transformation. In the moment of dancing, I reach out to you and invite you to come with me on this journey. And that's all we have, that moment. So where we go together as audience, as artists, as co-creators, as collaborators, where we go together is Hopefully we haven't arrived before we make the journey, right? Maybe we're back to Robbie's curiosity. We are together asking for where, you know, figuring out where we're, where we need to go for the world today. That's so beautiful, Nadia. I love thinking about that. I love thinking about that. Um, so yes, curiosity, I think, like if this work particularly and if my work in it and when i think about work like sharon said not separated from the work i also think about the work that i do here in new orleans with southern solidarity which is this community the grassroots community that feeds helps support our unhoused community members every day with food with getting ids with so different types of support. So I think about that work as much as I think about performance, as much as I think about like any of the this work that if folks from my work, my collective works took that curiosity because curiosity is so huge to keep asking and leaning in. Um, and I find that curiosity leads to relationship building too, right? If I'm if I'm curious about something, then I can ask questions and want to build relationship. And I've learned that if I'm not curious, I'm like, I need to get the hell out of here. I don't have no questions. I need to go because um, I love asking questions. Um, so I think about that curiosity, that's relationship building, and you know, and the place of accountability that also has a relationship with curiosity, 
right? If I'm curious about what you're doing, then I ask questions, I don't make assumptions. And if I'm not making assumptions, I'm learning you and we're building relationship. And if we're building relationship, there can be a di different levels of accountability as we continue to be more curious and build more relationship. So I think about like, if, and yes, and thinking about more recently how accountability and the compassionate practice of accountability. So, you know, not like, I just want to drag you, but like, hey, here's a question of curiosity because I'm concerned about the way that you just did this. So I'm going to be curious about that. So then maybe we can get some understanding of each other and then get to a place of accountability. And all of that to me feels like anti-oppressive work, right? So if folks were more curious, like if my work could lead folks to being more curious and the ways in which I want to be in community, lead folks to asking more questions because they want to know each other or recognize that they have no questions and maybe they need to leave a space could lead to accountability with some compassion, then we could be doing some real revolutionary and anti-racist and anti-oppressive work, right? That's just like from, that is from getting curious and asking questions, right? If instead of being scared of someone, I'm asking them questions, right? Because my fear is probably based in oppression. Then I can be like, so I just feel like if, my work could do that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome spirit. Sharon, what, what is your, what is your hope and, and thoughts about your work? I think um, it's all a prayer. And I think what I'm praying for is divine connection. So divine connection th through and as me, around and, you know, within. Beautiful. I think friends that we are almost out of time, but I did, Ananya, I do want you to let people know where Dust Stock is now, because this is not a completed piece. Spirit, as you mentioned earlier, you know, before we got on, just because it's a film doesn't mean it's like in the can and that's it. It's moving. It's a, it's a live thing. So tell us what's happening with it. Thank you, Jen. So yes, Dust Stock, first of all, let me say, let me thank my amazing collaborators again, uh, Darren Johnson, who made the film uh, beautifully at a moment when we just needed to capture what was going on. Um, and that, and uh, we had the, the beautiful vocal presences from Spirit and Sharon in the work. And Damien Strange, who was also a sound collaborator here, created, you know, helped us frame so much of that. I want to also thank the amazing artists, you know, I work with. So that's some, that was a moment, but it was intended as snapshot moments, you know, so to indicate the map of the work, indicate now as, you know, we are live performers now, it's becoming, we're reconstructing it in this moment because after the, you know, the post-pandemic, post-multiple pandemic moment is its own moment. And now we are finally able to figure it out for live stage. So, and now that's the work we're in. We're building our stamina. And by stamina, I mean, it is not just physical stamina, though that is important. It's also an emotional stamina to carry us through those four different journeys, very different journeys. And we're going to be, that's what, that's where we're working, um, intensely building towards a premiere and spirit will be visiting us sometime soon so we can continue that work and hopefully bring it to you. Yes, we hope so. 
Uh, before we leave, I just wanted to, uh, one of our friends with us tonight says, you are all incredible, so grateful. The ancestors are humming in pleasure, so. Um, Jen, one, one thing I wanted to tell everyone that the word dastak is Farsi for knocking. So it's about the knockings of justice on our heart. Um, I wish you me. And the I wish you me is such a beautiful circularity. Um, of course, the incredible Sharon Bridgeforth and then and then spirit weaves a spell right out of that. Um, I, you know, it came from thinking about voices of children and ancestors together. Um, but I just wanted to also say that thus tuck, this sense of knocking Think about where all the different places that you hear it. Uh, what knocks on your heart? I just, yeah, sorry, I just need to say that. Oh, no, I'm glad you did because I actually forgot to mention that when I started and I meant to say that. We, I think we describe, we, we definitely define that for people on our description of the film because we wanted to make sure people knew that that's the origin of that. So wonderful. Well, I think I just have to thank you all so, so, so much. You are all so beautiful and your work is inspiring, your connectivity, your, um, you know, everything that you're uh, doing is, is really, really inspiring. And I'm so grateful that you shared with, with us tonight, your thoughts about it. I'm just so grateful you've shared the film with us, Ananya. We really, really look forward to being this on the stage and in 2022. So for the people that are joining us tonight, do, do you know, first of all, go to skirball.org because we are open. Uh, we, we opened, yay. Uh, we have an Ai Weiwei exhibition. Ananya, we opened Ai Weiwei. Uh, finally, so we have an exhibition, it is open. We are also have adapted our Noah's Ark, wonderful Noah's Ark exhibition to be outside. It's called Noah's, mm -hmm the ark and so children and families can come and have an experience outside and they've built some wonderful things and there's theater and there's experiences there for children and families and of course you know this summer we will be back to live music and we in the fall we do hope to be kind of back in in full we hope so do join us and thank you all for joining us and once again to my panelists uh, deeply deeply grateful all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.